Florida Post Church in Omaha. And Pastor Gene, what I did is I made it about Jesus' visibility because really that's what it's about. That was a very purposeful statement uh, that that administration put out picking the very day that we celebrate our resurrected Lord. Now, some argue and say, well, that day changes every year. No, that's not the point. The point is, is it was targeted towards us Christians. And uh, it was very, very purposeful. That's why he waited until the last minute. And it's why he chose that day, the very day of our resurrected Lord that follows on this particular year. But I will say this. I don't know why they didn't pick today. Today is April Fool's Day. Jesus, when he made it very visible... Um, he talked about uh, transgenderism. He also talked about what true marriage was. And he said marriage is between one man and one woman, and he defined that. They also, those that want to have their own visibility day, should have picked Halloween because, after all, that's what they do is dress up in uh, costumes. So I did speak about this yesterday, and uh, I let the people know what the administration said. I let them know what the Scripture also talks about. And then I went into my message, and people got saved, Pastor Gene. Uh, there was the flow of the Holy Spirit in signs and wonders and also word of knowledge. I want to say this, though. I did get a pushback from really one pastor that didn't like that I had put out this statement. Uh, of, you know, Jesus' visibility. He said, uh, really, that that's not what Resurrection Sunday is about. We should have kept the Biden thing off the table. And then he began to further rebuke me and other pastors uh, for trying to be a moral majority voice in our country. And that's the problem with America, is that pastor's viewpoint. And I want to say, if we don't speak out, who will, and when is the right day? And then lastly, he reminds me of David. When the time was for kings to go out to battle in 2 Samuel 11, David sent the people to go out and fight. And so that's what we cannot do as pastors is let the people right. do all the fighting and we do nothing. All right, let me go to you, Troy. You're a pastor there south of Fort Worth. Uh, what about a trans day of visibility? Uh, what do you think of that? Well, that was meant to be hurtful. It, it was actually, it was very strategic. It was meant to hurt us somehow. Uh, I think that what our current administration needs to be aware of is that when Jesus comes back, it'll be Jesus visibility day because every eye shall see him. And when he puts his foot on the planet Earth, he's not coming back as a six pound baby Jew like he did the first time. He's coming back to rule and to reign. And there's a huge word of repentance that's going on right now. And I think that you know, I know that we're going to talk about uh, uh, the eclipse here within the next few minutes, but I don't. The reason why God is having to declare repent, repent, repent from the heavens is because the church is not doing its job anymore. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord, and I know which side I'm on. Yeah, amen to that. Mark, let me go to you. I no, sir. And sadly, you know what he's actually doing is he's recruiting. What he's actually doing is he's. This is a this is a big bunch of recruitment hype. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say all of your rebellion is born from the horrors of the adversity that you're facing. And then they are creating the narrative of look at all the look at all the crisis that has taken place. Look at all the look at all the hatred that is against you. when in fact, it's not true at all. This is all about recruitment. And sadly, they're actually being successful and they know that. And then, of course, they want to be successful on the day that we celebrate the day that Jesus rose up to slap death in the face for all of us. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, this is absolutely on purpose. So, Pastor Hank, how do we respond to this? We stand up and we say we're not going to put up with it, and we call it out for what it is. But where do we go from here for the, the yeah. Christian or the believer that's sitting at home that says, I didn't like it, I don't want, but what do I do about it? What do they do? Well, I think first and foremost is it starts with leaders. The Bible says that when the people, you know, the leaders bravely led, the people willingly followed. So we need brave leaders and willing people. That's the first thing. Second, you got to understand that less than 2% identify as the transgender movement. So that is a very small population. We need to love those people. We need to share the gospel with them. But what we have to understand is our government is trying to do something that most of these people don't realize, these pastors. 
we have, are, have, are facing right now in our country the actual onslaught of a fight against our religious liberties. That hasn't happened since our independence. So we got to keep standing up and we got to fight for our right to be able to glorify Jesus and to be a Christian in a God-fearing country, United States well, of America. People are actually looking for answers because, because the word is out that this is a serious warning. And I mean, uh, you know, trucks are not being allowed to be able to drive and like schools are being let out. The National Guard is being released. That's never happened before at an eclipse before, because there is a sobering agenda or a sobering word, man, that actually goes with this. And even ungodly people are picking this up. The church, however, even though we're late bloomers to this revelation, we have finally come into agreement that God does speak through the sun and the moon and the stars, as Jesus prophesied in Luke chapter 21, that he would. And we're actually starting to see that these kinds of messages, you cannot deny them and you cannot ignore them. So you need to know what it is. All right, so we're gonna hit just some of the highlights uh, of this, folks here watch at home. I want you to do your own research and dig into the Bible yourself. And you just you, you quoted a great scripture in Luke 21. You also quoted Genesis 1:14. We talk a lot about heavens to denote seasons in the calendar and days or years, but you reminded us that the the first thing mentioned is that the heavens will bring us is signs for those that might not pay attention all of that what are the why are these signs significant and what denotes a sign so a sign is is a prophetic declaration and it's it literally spells something out for us and so whenever in in genesis 1 14 as you just mentioned on the fourth day that god created the material universe he didn't create the sun and the moon and the stars for light. Remember, he already had light on the first, second, third day. It was already there. But rather, he created them for signs, seasons, days, and years. And the word season there, of course, is moadim, and it actually means prophetic appointment or the, or the prophetic timing of things. So God uses the heavens as a supernatural timepiece to show us what we ought to do. It's always been like that, and uh, the church is just now catching up with it, and I'm very, very grateful for it. All right, so we all know if we've paid attention at all, there was a, a um, uh, an eclipse in uh, 2017 that went from the upper northwest to the southeast, and uh, now we've got this one coming in. So kind of quickly run down what is so significant about these two eclipses. Well, thank you, sir. I first of all, you know, the idea and we we might make the mistake of thinking, hey, this happens all the time. This has happened eight times in the United States. This next one will be the eighth time since 1776. And the last time that we had a full solar eclipse that went from one end of the nation to the other that only touched America was in fact in 1776, which of course is the year of the birth of our nation. So this is a national word. And whenever God speaks through the sun, through these eclipses, he's always talking to a nation. Okay, so it's like when God wants to speak a national word and get, get their attention in the heavens, he uses the sun to do that. Um, the significance of these two eclipses is, number one, they are seven years apart. And the first one, of course, um, w w happened on the first of Elul on the Hebrew calendar. And that means the month of repentance. And 40 days after the, after the first day of Elul is judgment day. And so that's why it's the sign of Jonah the prophet, because on the first of Elul, way back uh, 700 some odd years before King Jesus, there's the great Assyrian eclipse, and that was the day that Jonah walked into there. And so they got, they knew exactly what the message was, was that they had 40 days to repent. So we see this happen. And then as this hour and 33 minute event took place, the totality of that of that shadow crossed seven cities that was called Salem. And that speaks of seven years of peace. Now, where it began was Salem, Oregon, as you can see, and where it ended was at Fort Sumter, which is where the Civil War began. So it ends where the Civil War begins. Wow. Now, eight years later, which is going to be on the 8th of April, we have another eclipse that goes all the way across our nation, and it begins at Eagle Pass, Texas, and that was where the last Confederate general buried the last Confederate 
flag. That's called Shelby. And it's, you know, Shelby Park is on, you know, all the news today. Well, that's that's actually named after a Confederate general, a, a Confederate general called Shelby. And friends, this is where the Civil War actually ended. So the first one ended where the Civil War begins. The second one begins where this where the Civil War ended. And then they both go all the way across the nation. And this one actually goes over seven cities called Nineveh. Now, it actually goes over eighth one in Nova Scotia, Canada, but it begins with Jonah, Texas, and then it goes through Nineveh, Texas, and then it passes through seven cities that's actually called Nineveh. And it's like, what is that? It's the sign of Jonah the prophet that says, you need to repent. You have to repent. It's a word of repentance, no matter how you look at it. And the threat is actually civil war. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about that, but it speaks very clearly of civil war to me. Again, how uh, where it begins and where it ends, both of them speak of uh, civil war. Uh, um, Shelby uh, Park is on the news every single day today, and it's about the difference between state rights and federal rights to be able to guard our, our state that is called Texas. They both cross over in the land of Lincoln, right? Right. Um, all these things speak of our nation being split. And I think that this is a warning that God Almighty is speaking, saying, repent, get your act together, or the nation is going to be split apart. All right. Well, let me ask you this, uh, that I don't, uh, I mean, because I know you hit the, the real highlights there as we went down the path. Why do you think, uh, and I'm just, this is just your opinion, obviously, because you probably don't know. Why are we seeing so many parks start to, to shut down. We see cities that are already proclaiming, uh, you know, don't come to our city, stay home. Uh, th there's, it's ridiculous what people are saying. Well, there's going to be all these people uh, there in Texas where um, one of the eclipses coming through south of Fredericksburg in Colleen, they're already declaring, you know, some emergency. It's like an eclipse d does just doesn't do that. I mean, we have gone through eclipses before. So why would you, why do you think we're seeing all of these people react? And I say these people, I'm saying government agencies, cities, counties, governments, why are they reacting this way? Well, this is the playbook of the globalists today, and it works like this. If we can, if we can declare that there is a crisis, then we can bring whatever sanctions and compliance that we demand. And I think that they constantly, I think that we're constantly having things piloted and test driven to us to see what the compliance is going to be. And of course, it's all in the name of peace and safety. But then as the word of God says, we all know that sudden destruction comes. So to be able to, to say, no, you know, this shadow is too scary for us. So we're going to have to bust out the National Guard. You're not allowed to go to parks. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to drive a truck. That no one has ever seen anything like that happen before. But this is the new norm that we are faced, uh, that we are faced with. And I think it's up to us if we're going to drink that Kool-Aid or not. Yeah, I agree. Mark, let me bring you into the conversation here. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen this like I have. Well, again, I probably have a different uh, perspective than maybe what a lot of people want to hear. I think what happens is God does give signs in the heavens and he gives wonders in the earth. There's blood, fire, vapor of smoke, Acts 2 says. So there will be sometimes natural things that happen. Some of that is the hand of the devil responding, wanting people to think that somehow it's always God that's doing those things. Then you see man getting involved for what you're talking about here to bring certain fear control uh, as we should learn our lesson through Y2K. And then how about the blood moon craze that those that wrote the books and perpetrated the blood moon, I'm not saying it wasn't legit with the sign, but let's face it, they made all the money while people were panicking and in fear. We have to remember something, no matter what sign God gives, as long as the Holy Spirit is in the earth, including the Antichrist, according to scripture, is restrained by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as long as God's Spirit's in the earth, he always has a redemptive plan. That's why Luke 21, when it talks about the sun, the moon, and the stars, nations in perplexity, waves, you know, roaring, uh, and he talks about men's heart failing for fear. He says, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. In the same way, when we look at this eclipse, we have to understand it is about God's redemptive plan because his Spirit is here in the earth. What's a redemptive plan? 
when God brings a warning, when God calls for something, it's always to bring a plan of help and plan of hope. People talk about Nineveh. They talk about Jonah. But you know what? There was a point when they repented in Nineveh. And Jonah didn't like the results that his word was not received because the people repented. God changed his mind. And Nineveh had a second chance. I believe all these signs are pointing to that God is saying, America, I'm giving you another chance. It's no coincidence, April 8th, to Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday is 40 days, and I believe we're going to see a glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lastly, I want to say this. People talk about repentance. What about the 2016? What about the 2020? Uh, nationwide repentance movements of some of the great leaders that hundreds of thousands gathered. Did that make a difference, God? Yes, it did. And if one man, Moses, could change the outcome and a destiny of a nation when they were corrupt and they deserved to be wiped out, one man, Moses, stood up and held God to his redemptive plan and to his covenant. And that's what this man is doing during this eclipse. You will remember, God, your covenant over this nation, and you will remember your redemptive plan, and you will show your goodness and mercy for the sake of this country and your glory and the harvest that's coming. All right, so Troy, I'll let you follow up to that. I mean, what, what's the... Uh, What's the takeaway from this that people, I mean, because I talked to people there all over the board with this, should they be concerned? Should they, what should they take from here? Um, oh. Is this a, obviously it's a chance to repent, those that haven't repented. Uh, but I want to get your take. Where, where's the, where's the hope in all of this? Oh, listen, I'm not scared. I promise you this, I could, I'm getting a front row seat to the greatest thing that's ever happened. And it's the voice of God being demonstrated today. And yes, my brother's right. There is a plan of redemption here. We are the only nation on the planet Earth that says, one nation under God. Amen. We don't want to be two different nations. We don't want to be three different nations. We want to be one nation, and that is that is that nation is real as long as Christ is ahead. This is an opportunity for us to come out of a burning house and into a safe place. We cry out as a people, and we have to believe. Listen, if it can happen with Nineveh, it can happen with the United States. Nineveh was a wicked, wicked, wicked king and a wicked in a very wicked. Uh, government and the bible says when the people repented that soon the king himself repented and then god actually turned and said okay i'm not going to be doing these things so that is the plan and we still have a powerful voice we have to give hope we need to be really good at giving people hope and i'm saying that it is not the heart of jesus for our nation to be split i'm saying that the threat is real that it's there and we can repent and cry out and be the people that god almighty has called us to be and I love the fact, one great thing about Y2K, it turned, did make a lot of people stand up and go, maybe I need to get right with God. <laughs> I know that wasn't the intent of it, but you know, there was, uh, there's there been moments throughout history that make people turn back to God. And I, anytime we can get people turning back to God or turning to God for the first time, it's a great yes. thing. And you know, I like what Kenneth Hagin said, there, the signs are to make you wonder and so we're, we're going to get some signs. It's going to be fun, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think anybody knows without a doubt. But it is, I think it's phenomenally interesting how you've got all of these city names and, I mean, all the connect. Something's up there. Something's up. It's oh, okay. definitely worth watching. Uh, all right. So sure. before I let you go, I mean, I'm running out of time here with you. But, Troy, I want to talk about uh, because of what you've done with uh, rescuing people out of sex trafficking. And then what the, let's I want to get you to weigh in on the uh, uh, Sean Diddy Combs uh, latest issue of, with the with the law and the rage. What do you think is really going on? Well, I was speaking to Congress at the International Summit Against Human Trafficking last year, and it was a great privilege. And I prophesied by the power of God, and I said, there is a storm that is coming that is going to uproot all of this sexual trafficking and shut down the power. And so I think that I think that there I think that there are indeed some nefarious agendas and all these kinds of things. But also, I do think this. I think that the the light is shining into a lot of very dark places that everybody says, no, no, no judgment can ever enter into a place like this. And God Almighty loves children. God Almighty loves people who are otherwise being enslaved. And if the body of Jesus doesn't stand up to this, there's nobody else coming. So looking into this whole thing of looking at the top executives and the top entertainers, 
of the people who actually entertain us? Yes, absolutely. There are many that are involved in all different kinds of sexual trafficking, and I'm saying exposure is, is indeed coming. Troy Brewer, uh, tell people how they can follow you and follow your ministry. What's, uh, what's the website again? Uh, TroyBrewer.com. TroyBrewer.com. Right for the people. There's been terrorist activity against him. But I got to remind the viewers of something that the Lord was saying back in September of last year. He was talking about Iran would rise up like a snake and would strike Israel. And then he began to talk about how uh, in February and March that there would be the sound of war beats in Israel and there would even be missiles that would fly and there would be an attack upon them. And I thank God that he raised up a strong leader in Israel at this time because I really believe to the point of your guest tonight, one of the panelists that, listen, Israel is surrounded by bullies. And if they don't puff out their chest and do what's right for their people and for the country, they will continually be pushed around. But I think something has shifted. And I really believe that we're going to see not only the intervention of God, but the intervention of Israel with God's help that is going to do something that is going to deescalate a lot of this that's taken place. All right. Well, let me, ch let me change gears here. In outrage. It also kind of shows the persecution that has risen up against the church, against we Christians. And I think uh, it's amazing to me, Pastor Gene, when President Trump came out with the Bible and called America to pray again, he got pushed back even by preachers and evangelicals. And yet those same evangelicals and preachers were quiet about the transgender visibility day. And so I think we've got to continue to realize that we're under persecution. We're called Christian nationalists and all kinds of things for loving God and loving our country. But I do believe out of this persecution, the Bible promises that there is a level of glory that comes. And I'm expecting that glory to come and to touch this nation in a tremendous way and to deal with these evildoers and this wickedness and reset this country to bring a hope to our children. All right, uh, Matthew.